open up the spiral lace cut exercise. And this, um, this kind of simulates what we did on the, that other feature on your part. So we have these surfaces here, which are not flat. Uh, they have a 50 inch radius. So they're not quite flat, uh, and you wanted the tool path to be circular back and forth on each of these. Uh, so let me, I'm just gonna check that radius there. Uh, it's 140 thousandths radius. So I'm just gonna use a quarter inch ball mill for this as well. All right, so quarter inch ball mill. And not going to worry too much about the details here. And this is what we're going to cut. All right, so we have a couple of options. Um, but what I want to do, the origin is the center of this part. So this is going to be fairly simple. Um, I'm going to bring this down. We're going to do an advanced 3D tool path. We're going to stick with the lace cut. But we're going to come down and select a spiral lace cut. Move this up just a little bit. All right, so we're going to do a spiral lace cut. On the advanced settings, uh, we've got the center and the minimum and maximum radius. Again, I'm not terribly worried about these values. Um, in this case, the step over will be the same regardless of the maximum value on the radial lace cut. Uh, the maximum radius is where the step over was calculated at. Uh, here it's going to be a consistent step over anyway. Uh, so the center of our spiral is going to be the origin and uh, uh, actually I might kick that out. I don't even remember. Let me see what size this is. Uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, roughly seven and three quarter, um, seven uh, nine sixteenths. Um, sorry, 7 11 sixteenths uh, radius here, so 10 inches is fine. 10 inches will get us there. All right, so spiral lace cut um, from at least small enough to at least big enough, the center of the spiral, and uh, my Z value. So we're going to say the top of the part is at zero, and I will alt-click up here just to make sure, and close enough. We'll make that zero, and the bottom of the part is going to be here or here or anywhere that's deep enough, really. Um, I'm just, I might say minus uh, 0.7. All right, and my step over, I think I will just stick with that 8,000 step over for the quarter inch ball mill. Uh, I'm going to select what I want to machine. And on my boundary, again, we're going to limit the boundary to this area. I don't want this thing spiraling all you know, around and around and around this thing. So uh, we're going to limit the tool path to the silhouette of this shape. I'm going to allow the center of the tool to go to the boundary. All right. And then uh, I'm probably going to, I don't remember if the solid model that I have for stock has stock left on there or not, but I'm going to go to none just to make sure that I get tool path here. Uh, I don't want it looking at the stock particularly, I just want it to create this tool path. Uh, and we're going to go back and forth so we don't get a retract. All right, so what this is going to do, and we're going to work from the outside in, not from the inside out. Uh, let's go ahead and create tool path and see what we get. And what we're wanting is for a circular tool path to work back and forth, you know, starting here and working its way to the back edge of that. Um, of that surface. And I guess I should have probably made a larger step over initially so it would calculate a little bit quicker for the video, um, but that is a fairly typical number for me to use with a quarter inch ball mill on um, this type of tool path.
and here we go. Okay, so now what you're seeing here is that last step over um, uh, where the the tool is getting into, you know, the, the tool is seeing uh, some contact on the upper edge of this radius and uh, so, so we're getting some vertical wall sensitivity here, but you can see other than that, the toolpath looks really good. Uh, we are arcing across, uh, starting here and working our way to the back. So what I might do is come in here and um, do, uh, do an extra boundary of, you know, five thousandths maybe. And while I'm here, let me go ahead and kick up this number a little bit until we know we're getting what we're looking for. Would be a better strategy. And again, I apologize. The other computer is much faster, but it's also much louder. So this computer tends to make better videos, but it is a little bit slower. And we're almost there. <clears throat> All right, and obviously, I, yes, I forgot to put a minus sign on here. And we're almost there. And of course, you know, if needed, we have, uh, you know, the choices under options, uh, you know, if we're, if we're getting some retracts at the ends of strokes or whatever, uh, to remove spikes. And we can also use shortest uh, contact move. Um, to help reduce spikes. But what I did here, uh, just to make sure that it's clear, is I reduced the boundary uh, by five thousandths. Uh, so it pulled the area that it's looking to create toolpath in five thousandths to keep the software from detecting the edge of that tool um, getting close to that wall where it starts trying to uh, avoid it. And we talked about uh, the way the toolpath is calculated uh, against a faceted surface. So um, this is this is what we did on the that other feature on the part that you were uh, asking about this morning. Uh, and again, we would just repeat that on each of these each of these bosses if we had multiple bosses to do.